Today, all of our Gran Turismo dreams come true. Welcome to the only road-going TVR Cerbera Speed 12 ever made. Conjured from TVR's racing escapades in the 1990s, the original Speed 12 was very much purely a racing car, built to take on the mighty McLaren F1 GTR in the FIA GT1 Championship. It was initially called Project 712, denoting 7 litres spread over 12 cylinders. Pure prototypes like the 911 GT1 quickly made the Speed 12 redundant in that category of racing, but TVR did have plans to make a few road-going versions. They created numerous road-going prototypes, but then TVR boss Peter Wheeler took one home one night and decided it was far too wild and brutal for the public. So he came back in in the morning and decided to can the project. All of the road-going prototypes were split up for spare parts for the race car project, apart from one. In 2003, TVR shocked the world by revealing this single road-going Cerbera Speed 12, made to look like a normal Cerbera, but really underneath, it was completely bespoke, completely race car to contain that V12 fury under there. There are good looking cars, and then there are brutal function over form cars, and then there's this thing. I don't think there's ever been anything else like it. The McLaren F1 is one of the all-time greats and the Jag XJ220 is my personal favourite car of all time. But this thing, where do you even start? Well, I guess I'm an engine guy, so let's pop the bonnet and see what's happening under there. And when I say pop the bonnet, I mean tear the entire front end of the car off. Holy Jesus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a 7.7 .7 litre, 840 horsepower, naturally aspirated V12 racing engine. There's debate online whether this thing is simply two TVR Speed 6 engines welded together, when there's other people that say it's a completely bespoke unit that barely shares a part with the straight six. What we do know is that they put this V12 on a dyno back in the early 2000s that was rated to around 1,000 horsepower, and this engine completely blew up that dyno. So much so that they decided to tune the engine in two halves, two straight sixes, to then combine. They decided to detune it to 840 horsepower, although the current owner says they've had it up near 900 horsepower. Absolutely insane. So this Speed 12, if the dyno technology had been there back in the day, could have been even more mad than it ended up being. Let's say a thousand horsepower with a bit more work, this car only weighs a thousand kilos, otherworldly. I love how far back the block sits. It's way back from the front axle and it's dominated on top by these enormous carbon air boxes that are then connected by this slithering plenum in the middle. What a beautiful piece of engineering. And then kind of in contrast all of that, you've got these incredibly rudimentary but also functional intake pipes that snake over the front suspension and are fed by that front ducting. And then down here, we've got the, the tubular exhaust system. 
got three on top and then three way down tucked underneath, but they all feed in down the side of the car and I imagine meet somewhere down there. Then you've got this huge billet up front here that's got so much stuff attached to it, the suspension, there's oil lines going all through it. And I think my favorite bit of this whole design the oil filter is right out front in the middle, kind of like the car's chin. If you have a front end crash, your oil filter is going to be the first casualty. I keep comparing it to the McLaren F1, but this thing is so much more brutal and organic than that car. I absolutely love it. The Speed 12 is made up of a tubular space frame combined with carbon Kevlar bodywork and then some aluminium honeycomb thrown in too. In here, it is pure race car. We've got a sequential shift, which is flat on the way up and then clutch and blipping on the way down. The middle pedal operates steel racing brakes at all four corners. There are some bits of TVR in here though. This central console, the shape of it is very road going TVR. Then some of these buttons I imagine have come straight out of a normal Cerbera. Also down either side with the doors open, you can see that the exhaust clearly curls round to either side of the car, then comes down the sills. I imagine that bit gets very hot when on the move. The driver's eye view is pretty incredible. I've just got the instrument binnacle in front of me. I cannot see the front of the car. I can just see a bit of the front right wing. I cannot see the left wing at all. I just basically have the windscreen wipers and then you'd be guessing where the front of the car is. Wind mirrors. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's tiny. That's not doing much. This car is brutal. Even the windscreen itself is tiny. It's so narrow. This thing on the road would have been manic. I understand where Peter Fuller was coming from. I personally think the best view of this car is the rear three quarter. Look at that wing. This thing makes a GT3 car look like a little club sport racer. And then it's got the classic Cerbera arse on it, but it's got a twin arse. It's, this car's got two arses. One, two. Look at that. The edge on it. And look at that. Let's take a closer look at that, actually. Now that we can see right in here, the back of the car is engineered exactly the same way as the front. At the front, you've got billet and then tubular chassis. And then here you've got tubular and then billet. And then everything else on the car just kind of hangs off of that structure. And then this diffuser, it's enormous. If I come back to where the rear axle is, which is here, it's a good meter and a half from it. A proper long tail design. And you've got these oil coolers just simply bolted to it. I think this could be my new favorite piece of carbon fiber ever. You can keep your Paganis and Koenig's eggs. This wins. Many of you guys will recognize this car as a hero of Gran Turismo. It first featured in Gran Turismo 3 and then was a mainstay through 4, 5 and 6. The stats in the game initially say 809 brake horsepower, not 60 in 3.5 seconds, but most interestingly, a top speed of 230 miles an hour. That would have taken it very close to the McLaren F1 back in the day. And TVR never discounted the fact that this Speed 12 could have done over 240 and therefore made it the fastest road car in the world. In the game, through some tuning or some simple slipstreaming, the virtual version of this car has been seen over 300 miles an hour. Scary stuff. Something I didn't quite realize until I got here, this is Lawfield and Abbott, TVR specialist. 
that this is also the site of the old TVR factory. Do you remember that Top Gear episode where the guys did the ode to the British sports car? They ended up here and were looking at all the abandoned bits of the factory. Well, this is one of the body shells. This is one of the fiberglass bodies from a TVR that the guys were looking around. This red brick building is one of the final bits of the original factory that's still around. Because sadly, through this fence, that there is the final remnants of the main TVR factory. It's now been completely demolished and is being redeveloped into new industrial space. It's so sad to see. Thankfully, stuff like that Speed 12 is still kicking around and what was really nice is the District TVR Club just turned up this morning to come and check out the car as well and have a chat with us filming. So that was really nice, but if you look at the news recently with TVR as well, this new incarnation of TVR isn't doing great either. They were going to launch that V8 Griffith and then they were going to launch an EV and it's all gone very quiet. So that is old TVR. New TVR isn't looking much better. Where's that brand going to go in future? Fundamentally, for me, the Cerbera is my favourite TVR. The Tuscan is cool and the Sagaris is a pretty slick piece of kit, but the muscularity of the Cerbera takes it for me. I quite fancy owning one at some point. Probably not this one. A straight six would do me. This car is going under the hammer at Silverstone Auctions Supercar Fest sale on the 20th of May. And their estimate is between four and 500,000 pounds. And to me, this thing is worth every penny of that. The guys here keep it in race ready condition, both cosmetically and mechanically. And on that front, it'd be a shame to come all the way up here to Blackpool and not have this thing do its thing. Okay, how to start up a Cerebra Speed 12. Been told this black button here. Ignition, pumps are going. It's telling me, pit you bastard. Thank you. Now, hold down the black button with a tiny bit of throttle. Here we go. What just happened? So Graham, you're the owner of the Speed 12, the only road legal car from factory, but some people may have seen other Speed 12s out and about, like this one here. So if that is the real deal, what are these other ones? I would call this car the sister car. Okay. And the Essentially where it was derived from was I bought all the spare parts left over from the TVR factory when it shut. Okay. And that included various chassis, various iterations of body shells that hadn't been used on the red car. Sure. And then I embarked on a project to build a sympathetic version of a Cerberus B12. Okay, so you, this is a proper Speed 12 chassis, but the Correct. engine is what? So it's an Aston Martin Vanquish V12. Okay, so there's which, six litre? Six litre, yep. which we've then somewhat modified. Okay. So individual throttle bodies, it's dry sumped, lots of other little goodies in there, Motec, ECU, etc. Okay, so if that car is the proper chassis and the proper engine, 
are the other Speed 12s out there like this, so they'll maybe have the chassis, but there'll be some other engine put in there. There is a company, and the name of them is TBR, not mm -hmm. to be confused. Sure. They got hold of an original chassis, that being the centre tub section of a Speed 12. They then built their own version. They managed to get hold of the original moulds for the vehicle, so they have the correct panels. Okay. And then they did essentially the same as me. So they've bought their own Vanquish engine. They've done their own version of that. I don't think it's been done to quite the same level this has, but they've kind of done a similar thing. These are the only two correctly registered. They've got the correct chassis, the correct registration numbers. And currently you own them both. And yes, luckily I happen to own them both. That's not a bad accolade to have. <laughs> so this is your place, Lawfield and Abbott. Yes. And clearly you do a lot of TVR work, but there's also some very special other stuff in here. What do you guys specialize in? Uh, we actually started this business during lockdown. Okay. Um, there was a business here previously that catered really solely for TVRs. Mm -hmm. And then we took over the premises. But we have Lawfield Engineering next door. Yes run by Brian Hosfield, he built this car. Okay. He effectively designed it, built it, and did you, everything. And you're Mr. Abbott. And I'm so Abbott. Okay. So we've got Lawfield Engineering next sure. door, and then this business is Lawfield and Abbott. Okay. And we've taken the business in a slightly different direction. So we, now we bring in a lot of very old, early uh, Rolls Royces, we get Bentleys, we get Porsches, we get lots of stuff coming in. Cool. But we tend to do complete restoration work. I was going to say, the TVRs in there, I mean, they've been stripped right back yeah. to their chassis yeah, yeah. and look completely refreshed. Correct, yeah. So Everything's new, the wiring's new, everything. I mean, there's a Wraith Rolls-Royce up on the stand at the back there. Yes, I see that. That's got amazing pedigree. So, Sir Winston Churchill's been in it. Cool. The Queen's been in it. Nice. Uh, there's a long list of people that have been in that car. It has amazing pedigree. No it's, wonder you can afford so, two speed 12s. What the hell? Strangely, <laughs> strangely, um, we, make, we don't make the money out of this business. The issue with this type of business is that 100% um, quality comes first, above yes. and beyond everything. So if I charge 80, 100 pounds an hour, in effect, the number of hours we put in, we're lucky to get 25 pounds an hour. Wow. So everything that goes out the door is perfect, but you learn in this business that if everything goes out perfect, you don't make the money. Okay. If I wanted to make the money, it wouldn't be so great. But, it's, but we go to the nth degree. I think Richard at the smallest cog would sympathise a bit with that. Yeah. It seems like a yeah. very similar situation. Because every shut line's got to be right, and that's difficult. Yeah, Sounds especially easy, on a TBR. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so how did you end up with that car right there? How did you end up buying that one of one TBR? The previous owner became aware of my project. I'm not exactly sure how, but TBR is a small world. <laughs> yes. And then he approached me. I think initially he wanted to find out what I was up to, which mm -hmm. is great because we could share certain ideas and discussions progressed and um, I ended up buying it. Okay. So I had both, but having two is a bit crazy, I have to be honest. And clearly you, you've driven that car, so yeah. are the claims true? Do you reckon that thing could have done over 240 miles an hour? If you take the wing off, mm -hmm. it's geared to do 240 miles an hour. Wow. But with the amount of downfall you get off the wing, it would probably not work. <laughs> okay. You'd, you'd, you might get to 220 or something, I don't know. But if you really want to see how it will go, you take the wing off. Sure. And then you really want a straight road. So I guess my final question is, why are you selling it? Um, two has been a lot for a long time, and I don't think I can really share my time faithfully between two. I run a business you know, 100 miles away from here. Sure. So I'm going to focus on the purple one. Okay. And I had to make a tough choice between the two, and my heart is actually more with the purple one, purely because I was so involved in building it. Yes. I love the red one, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but... I, I kind of get it, You're like, this is yeah. a usable one, you're going to have this out at events you yeah, know, yeah, throughout yeah. the year, yeah. versus that one that's obviously a bit more, yeah. you know, you need to be a bit yeah. more precious with that. That one just feels a bit too special, Yeah. so it comes out on very special occasions. This one, I come to the factory, we line it up, we take it out, no issues. Okay, well thank you so much for having us and I guess good luck with the sale. Thank you very much. Filming with this truly special one-off car today is something that I'm probably going to remember for the rest of my life. Matt behind camera actually made a really good point. If you 
look at this car from certain angles and take in the mechanical makeup of it, it's actually very similar to the Aston Martin Vulcan, especially the track only one, the AMR Pro. Do you agree? Anyway, today has got me thinking, what other cars from this epic era of performance in the 90s and early 2000s would you like to see on the channel next? Tell me in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I've been Mike and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe. P.S. I've been told a really cool fact. There's certain bits on this car that look like they're PPF'd. It's actually helicopter blade tape because PPF didn't exist back then. So TVR wanted to protect it. They used tape from helicopter blades. TVR were 20 years ahead of PPF. Kind of cool. <laughs>